It's time for another Dice Tower review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be getting our thumbs all green. We're going to be buying some seeds at the market, we're going to be planting those seeds, we're going to be watering them into vegetables, we're going to be harvesting them. Eh, we might actually be sending some critters like birds and rabbits out to go gnaw off our friends' little <laughs> vegetables. And a fun little game here called Garden Dice from Merry Day Games. Two to four players, takes about an hour. Let's jump on in, I'll show you how it's played, and I'll tell you what I really think on the other side. In Garden Dice, you get to pick whether you want to be the blue butterflies, the red ladybugs, the yellow bees, or the green crickets. You then get to take a very high quality player aid. It's thick, it's cardboard, it's double sided to tell you about the scoring on the back and all the actions you can do on the front. You also get a double sided critter token which has a rabbit and a bird, a double sided token that has a sundial and a scarecrow and you get a sun token as well. All right, on guard dice, what you do on your turn is you roll four dice. And from these four dice, uh, you're gonna decide which actions to do. Let's go to the different actions you can do. One is you can buy a seed. As you notice, we have squash, carrots, tomatoes, artichoke, and eggplant, and they are one, two, three, four, and five on the numbers. Now, if you can use any of these dice to buy a seed of any kind of that number or lower. So if I want to use this three die to buy a seed, uh, I can buy a three, two, or one, anything that's three or less. So I'll buy the tomato seed, I'll place it near my uh, side there, and I will do that. So this three is now spent. I have three other dice to spend. Uh, I can place a tile. So if I wanted to place this tile somewhere, I can use any of these two dice as coordinates. We see here on the fence, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I wanted to use the two and the six die to place it, I could put it here, two, six, which is right here, or I could go two, six, and put it right there. Let's do that. Boom, it's on the board, these two are spent, and then I have a two, maybe I just buy another seed. That would be the end of my turn. It would go to the next person, and they'd roll the next four dice. Now let's go over to the other types of actions that you can do. Uh, let's roll a dice here. You can water a seed. Uh, anytime you water a seed, you have to roll at least that number or higher. So let's see, a four would do it. I could use this dice to water this seed, and it's now been watered into a vegetable. I also can now harvest this by, again, using any die that's that number or higher. So I can use a three, four, five, or six. I'll use a four, and this one will now get harvested. Essentially, it comes off the board, it stays in my uh, side as a vegetable, and I score three points, and I would go one, two, three. So essentially, you're buying seeds, placing seeds, watering seeds, and then harvesting seeds, and that's eventually how you get most of the points. So let's, let's say we have these, uh, all those are seeds out there, and they're owned by the person who has their disc on there. Now let's say when they're all seeds and this person waters this one. Well, some chaining can occur. So when this one gets watered, we see it's a number five, it gets watered here. What happens, we look in every direction, up, down, left, right, but not diagonal. And if there's a tile that's less than this, it also gets watered. So the one is less than a five, so this one gets watered. So you just helped out your buddy. This one's less than a five, so this one also gets watered. So we do this in every direction. This is less than a five, so this happens. Now, this tile is less than a four, so it gets watered. But this tile is not less than a three, so it does not get. So that's sort of how a chain, it's called chaining, how a chain reaction can happen with seeding, uh, it can, with watering. It can also happen when harvesting. If the person on his next turn or on that turn then wanted to harvest this one, boom, this one would get harvested, but so would this and this and this and this, they'd all get harvested and each people would get the points uh, on the tile for that. But also the person who in or originated the harvest will also get one point for every one that got harvested from another player. So in this case, even though you're helping out other players and scoring them points, at least you get one point for every one of those tiles that somebody else harvests. Now let's go over some of the special tiles. Let's say someone places a, a uh, 
Let's see, it's a sundial and they place it here. Now, if this person has a sundial, what they're allowed to do is when they roll the dice, they can do one of two things if they want. Whenever they're placing something with coordinates, so let's say this blue player wants to place this artichoke somewhere, what they can do is if they have their uh, sundial out, they can take either one die and change it one or two values above or below this. So they can make it two or one or four or five. You can change up to two pips on one die or they can take two dice and change it one pip up or down. So they could change the two to a one or a three and they could change the three to a four or a two. One of those things they can do as long as they have their sundial out. So it really gives you a lot of flexibility on where you're putting things if you have the sundial out. Now, also if you roll a six, that allows you to flip a special tile. So they might flip this to a scarecrow. Well, what does the scarecrow do? Well, the first thing it does is any of the eight diagonal, any spots all around this scarecrow, when they score, since it's, it's the, butter, the blue butterfly's scarecrow, if this got watered, and of course this one would have gotten chain reaction watered as well, uh, if, and then it gets harvested, which means this one would get harvested as well, you get three extra bonus points if you harvest a vegetable that is anywhere around the scarecrow. So it's good to have the scarecrow there. Uh, it gives you extra points. There's another special tile as we talked about, the critter tile. Let's say the yellow player placed a critter tile. They always go bird side down. And what this, what this does is they can use a die to move the critter. So let's say they, they wanna use their six. They can move this critter up to six spots in any direction, uh, but it cannot, uh, it has to be empty spots. But what they really try to do with this is eat the seeds. Now normally, Let's say this was like this. This critter could come with the six and come and eat this person's seed. Now, they could do one of two things when they eat it. They can either uh, spit the seed out, meaning they discard the tile and place the disc on our critter. So I would have to push a second disc on my critter. And then this seed is out of the game for good. Or I could spend a die of equal or higher value to claim this. So if I wanted to eat their seed, but then spend a die that's worth two uh, or higher, I could then buy it and put my own thing on it and it comes off the board next to me. So you can essentially eat their seed and either steal it, if I have a die to be able to steal it, or I can uh, spit it out, which essentially um, takes it out of the game for good, but then I add one of these. You only have a finite amount of these discs and you use these to buy the seeds. So it's sort of a trade-off that you hurt somebody, but then it's gonna hurt you later. The only way to remove these discs is by rolling the actual coordinate and a six where this critter is, and then I can remove it from the board and I get all my discs back. Now, however, if there was a seed here and this critter was here like this, but this yellow person had a scarecrow this scarecrow protects the seed. This bird cannot eat this because the scarecrow is right next to it and it's this person's scarecrow. If this were a vegetable, the bird doesn't eat the vegetable, but if this person rolled a six, they can flip this to a bunny. The bunnies don't eat seeds, but they eat vegetables and they're not afraid of the scarecrow. So the bunnies, if this guy had rolled a six, could move this, boom, he eats, this, he eats the vegetable, and you could do the same thing that you could with the seed. You could either discard it and put an extra disc on the bunny, or you can pretty much put it uh, with you. And in that case, if it was a vegetable and I ate it and I decided to spend another die of one or higher to keep it, I would be able to keep this on my side, but I do have to flip it back to the seed at that time. Since both of these are special tiles, if you own them, anytime you roll a six, you can spend that six to flip any one of these two special tiles. Now these times twos are in basically the 10, 11, and 12 spaces for coordinates. So if someone placed one here and then watered it and then harvested it, it's essentially two times this point. So this would be two points. Uh, now if there's a scarecrow there, they would get the three extra points uh, for this. Let's say this yellow person had a scarecrow here and they harvested it. They would get the one plus the three points. They would not get the bonus if you're using the scarecrow. So you can't use a scarecrow bonus and the times two, you use just the scarecrow bonus in that, in that effect. You can also remove a, another person's critter. So let's say this person's rabbit is causing me havoc. He's at two, three. So I have a coordinate of two, three. And if this were a six, if I had rolled a six here, that allows me to remove a critter 
at that location, this person's critter would go back and out. So, all in all, in summary here, we've we, the things you can do is buy a seed tile, place a seed tile, water a seed, harvest a veggie. You can flip special tiles with sixes. You can move critters. You can eat stuff. And you can move other people's critters. So that's pretty much it. Let's talk about scoring. The game ends uh, as soon as the last tile that is available to get comes out. And the game ends pretty much at the end of that turn right there. Uh, there's different amount of tiles that come out depending on the amount of players. And then you tally up uh, all your bonus points. Let's look at that. Now in the scoring, if you have one of each, the one, two, three, four, five, the squash, carrot, tomato, artichoke, and eggplant, if you have one set of those, it's 15 points. So in this case, this person has two sets, they're 15 points each. Now, also, the points for the three, four tomatoes there, if you have three of any kind, you get 10 points, four of any kind, you get 15 points, and five or more of any kind, you're getting 20 points. So this person here scored the 15 for having the two full sets. They scored 10 points for having three carrots, 15 points for having four tomatoes. Now, leftover seeds. If you have any leftover seeds when the game ends, the first one is free, it doesn't matter. But for every seed after the first one that you have, that you have not yet placed, that you own and you have discs on, those are worth minus five points. Now we have the sun icon. This allows you to take any die and change it to anything or you can reroll all four dice. Now if you do that, you spend the sun. But if you did not use that and you have the sun at the end, it's additional five points. After you count up all these points, the one who has the most is the winner. All right, well there is garden dice. I must say, by looking at the theme and looking at the cute little artwork and looking at the birds and the bunnies and the scarecrows and the vegetables, you look at this game and you have four dice and you're like, this looks like a super light game. How much depth could this game have? This game actually is a little brain burnery. I was very surprised at how much thinking that you had to do in this game. You're staring at four dice and there's so many options most of the times that your brain wants to melt. <laughs> so if you the only bad thing about this game is if you have AP or someone that does have AP, they might sit there and stare at those dice and go through every permutation before they make a move and you'll just have to kick them. Uh, but that's just a minor crawl because the game is great. I, I very much enjoyed this game. Uh, I liked it with two, three, and four. It was really, really enjoyable. I love how you have so many choices of things that you can do. Uh, different places where you can go. The sundial allows you to change where you're putting things. It gives, there's just so many options with just four dice. And then you still have that take that. If you like kind of being able to rough up your opponents a little bit with, you know, eating their seeds and you can find the right time to do it. And then even in the scoring, the whole thing, do I go for the sets and try to get the 15 points? Or if nobody's going for those little ones, the squashes, maybe I'll just go out and get five of them without anybody knowing and I'll get 20 points from that. So there's multiple ways to score, multiple things to do, different ways to change the dice, lots of things to think about. And I was purely surprised at how deep this game is. Granted, it's not a heavyweight game, but I'd say it's probably a light medium to medium. It probably even crosses over to possibly a medium weight game, even though it looks so simple and cute. So anyway, if you're looking for a game that's probably, you possibly could play it with a family if you play with the lighter version. Um, or if you're looking for a game that's under an hour and still has a good amount of meat there, you want to check out Garden Dice. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>